Hey guys, it's Mr. Lucky here. This is my updated video on how to get better FPS for FSX. My last video wasn't as good, but uh, ever since I've been finding ways of how you can increase frames per second with, F with FSX or just make it run a bit smoother and better. Um, I'm sure most of you, or maybe even all of you uh, flight simmers, have searched the web and YouTube uh, of how to get better frames for FSX and there are many videos out there on YouTube of how to do it but uh, this is my my way and I just want to tell you first off if you really want to see a big difference with your frames or a decent change uh, to help performance you have to get more RAM that's the main thing because I've uh, I've got a new computer now at least 8 gigabytes of RAM will you will see some pretty good changes I'm gonna show you my specs quickly um, <clears throat> but yeah getting more RAM will definitely help so just uh because not everybody can afford the best computer out there obviously um, so I'd say the cheapest way uh, is just to get more RAM pretty much so yeah as you can see Intel Core i3 uh, with 8 gigabytes of RAM and that pretty much does the trick um, you don't have to get if you're if you're a serious serious a serious gamer then you're gonna want like one of those really expensive ones but if you just if you can't really afford those kind of PCs but you just still want to play FSX or whatever with decent frames then you're the right place but I've been I've been through a lot of trouble with FSX and performance and this is the one now so everybody knows the main uh, cause to or performance in your flight sim is always in the settings let me just say first you always want to have it your target frame at unlimited no matter how good your PC is have it set at unlimited that way your computer will always um, be able to get past its limit so if some people that may maybe they are able to get 40 frames and they like set it down to 40 frames but like maybe sometime during their flight or something uh, they're actually able to get a bit over that so unlimited will help you get the maximum frames you can whatever you can wherever you're flying or whatever situation may be so yeah, unlimited always. Have your screen load resolution, um, whatever it is, uh, make sure it's time 32. Filtering, I've learned that you should always have it on try lining up. Um, if you've played FS9, you should know already that that's the furthest you can go, and that's what we had to um, deal with anyway. Um, anastrophic is not, really, it's not a major difference, but if you're using things like Rex, um, then you really don't need it and it's strophic so yeah try and would do fine especially as I'm using Rex anyway you don't need anti uh, anti aliasing um, it doesn't it's not beneficial because the main reason you're playing FSX is like just it's the fly really like you're not it's not really much of a difference it doesn't really affect your flight you're not going to be worrying about the smooth edges on the building you know you know what I'm saying yeah so yeah advanced animations you always have to have that on regardless uh, none of these none of these I mean you can get away with some lens flare with um, the sun and stuff but as I'm saying I'm using Rex so don't really need it um, global text resolution I had to have that high you always want to have it around high or very high um, just it it's just basically if you have a high like the details in like uh, the Fault 737 like just like the text on like so the text in the virtual cockpit it will just be a bit blurry but if you have it at very high it clears out the text and stuff on the controls and whatever yeah um, this is completely your choice now aircraft <clears throat> uh, I recommend this it's you you want to have it like this, I mean you don't have to, but aircraft, cars and on the ground is all about realism with FSX. 
and landing lights illuminate the ground it's just to go with the realism especially if you're flying in a in a um, virtual cockpit you're gonna wanna have that some nice effects to have you don't have to have it but it's it's just a nice touch to um, your gameplay and I like to have cockpit tools on uh, so I know where my altimeter needs to be set and that kind of stuff and yeah high resolution 3D virtual cockpit you wanna have that checked as well so yeah basically medium high yeah okay now this is the main place we all know that the, your performance of FSX all comes down to the scenery um, <clears throat> if you don't have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM or 4 I recommend you have this set to small um, just uh, it just will help even like maybe not by a lot of frames but it will still help I, I just have it set to small or medium for people that have like not the best but pretty good computers a bit like mine um, mesh complexity and mesh resolution I see some people on YouTube and you may have seen them as well like they be, they tell you to have it like here or here or here um, yeah but really you don't need it like there's not much to see um, I don't see the benefit of having it anyway like that's how I use Rex so that pretty much adds all my details and textures and stuff so yeah it's just not necessary texture resolution this is basically the detail amount of detail that's on the ground so how realistic the ground looks it's um higher it goes the more photo realistic it looks it's basically like um google maps uh one meter will do it fine trust me on this even though if you're one of those people that like like all the eye candy and stuff and just like love to look at the detail from one meter to 30 centimeters is not much of a difference there's definitely a difference at seven centimeters but it's still um, at one meter it's still pretty uh, realistic and detailed anyway and you can still get decent frames with it there um, now water effects will definitely is, is, it will definitely kill your frames if you have it anywhere above low to um, 2x because uh, if I've, I've tried this even with um, bad computers and I've found that the reason like your frames will go up or down is basically based around the water effects as well as the scenery here but I've had the scenery like around here or um, normal and yeah the frames do change but I find that even but when I lower the water effects they there's a very significant increase in your frames um, but obviously if using things like uh, Rex or if you like to fly around places like Car the Caribbean or something places where you'll be over water a lot um, you would probably want to see lots of detail in the water so in order to see that um, you have to have it at low 2x anything below that and it will just look smooth you won't see any waves or animations so yeah and especially if you're using Rex you want to have it here as well uh, scenery complexity the, it depends on normal you won't get any jetways and I'm pretty sure like you want to have jetways and move the jetways and stuff so if you want to have the jetways you're definitely gonna have it on dense it does it doesn't matter anyway um, it's completely up to you I mean if you don't want the jetways then fine but um, I recommend you have it at dense Dents will show jetways but it won't show a lot of jetways at every parking gate so that's why I have it on very dense um, auto dense autogen density I have it on sparse you still see um uh, you still see some houses and stuff it doesn't look because if you have your texture resolution there you can see how detailed the ground looks and you don't really want to cover it up too much with like all the houses and buildings and stuff if you're gonna look at the ground um, so yeah you can have it at either um, sparse or normal I wouldn't really go over that and especially autogen density definitely drops your frames by at least 10 
um, I've tested it for myself and seen these differences especially if you, if you fly in a virtual cockpit everyone knows that the virtual cockpit will lower your frames much more than in the 2D cockpit as you get more frames in a 2D cockpit so yeah um, if you're flying in a virtual cockpit I wouldn't have this too high I have it at sports because I'm pretty much in the virtual cockpit all the time special effects details um, people say that there's not much difference between medium and high but like I said I've tested it before and if you're in um, I don't know a thunderstorm or something if you have a medium I've tested it and you see like the um, wing flexes quite a bit at, and at high it's kind of more exaggerated as it would be in real life so yeah I personally like it at high I think special effects is it's your choice uh, depending on how um, how much of a realistic person you are I'd set it medium high never I, I don't understand people that set it low because it just looks pretty weird um, probably like FS 2002 or below like I don't know there's no hardly any wing flex or anything so yeah medium or high um, depending on your PC um, yeah ground scenery shadows no no just useless you don't need that I don't know why that is there anyways weather is uh, pretty um, responsible for frame rates as well I like to have cloud coverage density at high just for the realism as well as using wrecks when you're at around I don't know 35,000 feet and you just have a lot of clouds below you it just it, it just looks pretty nice and it's a good touch um, but I wouldn't have it at maximum really though it's not that important but yeah high is decent and realistic enough and especially if you've um, flown for real before and you see lots of clouds and they need to use yeah I like to have that in my um, flights as well cloud draw distance nobody can really see over um, 60 miles so I have that there down there so I don't don't need up here and it will just drop your frames as well just have it down there thermal vigilation don't see much in that so I just have that none it's not necessary um, and yeah I have this rate at which weather change over time you don't need that especially if you're using um, real world weather um, yeah and I like to download winds and stuff yeah I have to, this is how it sh how I think it would be ideal uh, ideally for you guys um, traffic density I have at zero um, only because I use um, I fly on Vatsum I have it on zero otherwise it'd be up things like um, I don't know AI, tra AI traffic I say the max you go is um, 40 40 will, will pretty much do it without killing too much frames and you get decent a, a decent amount of uh, airline traffic um, but in order to uh, have because airline traffic does kill frames sometimes I recommend that if you're having it here you're gonna have to have everything down here really low like really low um, I'd put road vehicles at about 20 um, ships and freighters, leisure boats you're not, you haven't you, you haven't come to flight simulator to watch the ships and the leisure boats like let's be real it's not needed um, I mean depending on what kind of person you are like I say if you go around the Caribbean a lot if you just like to tour and like you just like all the eye candy maybe you can but for my purposes I don't like you I really I should have this at zero to be honest but yeah um, general aviation traffic pretty much the same ish as uh, the airline traffic density so I just have that you can have that down there airport vehicle density that's like your pushback truck and stuff and you know the cargo loader I have that low if you want to see those stuff anything below that you're not going to really see any ground vehicles so low will do it and like I said road vehicles should be at 20 you still see a decent amount of road vehicles I mean depending on what person you are if you come to flight simulated to like I don't know you see you know, I don't know download a car and just like join the traffic or something like that I don't know, you probably want to have that quite high. I come out to fly, I don't come out to watch the road vehicles, and I go across. Uh, I don't really. No, really watch anyway, yeah. Enough about talking about that, it's not important. <clears throat> but yeah, this is what I. This is how I um, recommend the settings to be around to see a decent. Um, 
to see decent frames and decent scenery really because FSX is supposed to be um, an upgrade to all the flight simulators so they've added lots of things in there that you don't want to miss out so um, so like for example like the jetways there's no point having it at normal because it's just basically like FS9 again no jet I don't know they do have jetways but yeah they upgraded it like make so you can't move the jetways and stuff so yeah keep uh, I'll stop blabbing on about the uh, jetways and stuff yeah so yeah but also but remember what I said um, at least eight gigabytes of RAM will help you see some substantial frame increase and yeah that's that's pretty much it guys um I have it like that so yeah um then you can save that and that should be that also yeah that should be that with the uh inside fsx now also what i want to show you guys is um you guys have seen the um you on youtube videos on the uh, they go to um uh they go <coughs> to autogen and they rename this thing to default old and yeah I mean you could do that I have seen um there's not much change I mean like dependent I think it depends on what kind of computer you have um but you can do that it doesn't kill frames I know that for sure it will not um take down your frames if it does then you just really need to upgrade your computer but um yeah you can change that if you want I don't need to change it to be honest um, also, another important thing, and you've probably seen this in uh, YouTube videos, um, you want to uh, type percent, temp percent, and oh gosh, you want to delete everything that is in here. Trust me, it does contribute to your performance of your computer. The better, the better the performance of your computer, the better your gaming is going to be. Um, so yeah, just cleaning out your computer. I also recommend raise a game booster. Um, I mean, I know some people like probably think, oh gosh, I've seen so many people do this before. Um, and maybe, I mean, it is, it is a common thing that gamers do have. Um, but trust me, it does work because instead of because uh, what it does is, I'm pretty sure you know what it does already. Like it. Um, Stops any like unwanted like services that are running on your computer and that so it's it helps you do that instead of you having to like manually go through like deep into your files and stuff and task manager and shut it down and it just basically does that for you um and as again like I said having quite a bit of RAM does help you to run your games um, smoothly while other applications are running in the background so yeah that's a good thing to have there the less things running in the background the best the better your performance will be um and yeah guys that's pretty much it uh hope you enjoyed uh, this video i hope it helped you out um but yeah that's it from me subscribe like and uh, leave any questions or comments below peace